Hello, welcome to Gigs Unleashed. This is episode 92. We are finally back. Oh man, back with a new day, a new time. It's, 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 uh, we've got a lot going on here. <laughs> All right, so before we get started, if you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much. And please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. Also, uh, be sure to leave us a comment. Let us know what you think about the very first Harry Potter film. By the way, that film is 20 years old at this point. That's insane. That makes me feel like an old lady. Um, also, if you are listening on your favorite podcast platform, we appreciate that as well. And uh, we would also ask that you leave us a five-star review on either Apple, Podchaser, or Spotify. Uh, obviously, as Jasmine said, uh, this week's episode, we're reviewing the first Harry Potter movie. In our run-up to our 100th episode, we will be working through all of the films, like, and obviously ending with the magical Finding Beasts movie, but they're really long titles. Fantastical all, Beasts. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Someone at Panic at the Disco wrote those title, titles, I swear. <laughs> like, so. um, anyway, we did take a little break. We <clears throat> Some things came up and we had to take a little break. Yeah. Um, Life gonna, happens, people. Yeah, Life. yeah, yeah. We're going to, not going to cover too much news, but we thought we've both not watched the Thor trailer, so we thought we're going to just quickly watch that with you guys now and just give our little thoughts on it. So... All right, let me uh, let me pull it up here. See what we got. All right, can you see that? Yeah, I got it. Okay, let's see. Oh, I can't hear it. You can't hear anything. What? No. Sorry, you said you can't hear anything. No. Oh. Um. Okay. Should check this before um there's an option to change that there we go all right let's try that again oh, I'll I'll compare now. Okay. kids get to popcorn now let me tell you the story of the space viking thor odinson he was no ordinary man he was a god after saving planet Earth for the 500th time, Thor set off on a new journey. Well, he got in shape. Why does he look like Thor? He Gump? went from dead bod <laughs> to god bod. Oh, yeah. And after all that, Mjolnir. he reclaimed his title <laughs> as the one and only Thor. Oh, spoke too soon. Damn, look at Natalie Jane? Portman's gun. I love how that house oh, fell down. Cool. <laughs> What's it been like? Three, four years? <laughs> Eight years, seven months, and six days, give or take. Wow, he's not hung up on her at all. Sensing feelings. <laughs> well, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> the only ones who gods care about is themselves. Oh, look, it's Voldemort. So this is my vow. All gods will die. I just want to say that was very, very impressive what you did back there. It's just my first bad guy. <laughs> you never forget your first. You are not like the other gods of killed. I have something worth fighting for. Gone into the galaxy. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Let's see who you are. I take off your disguise. Oh man, I uh, love Russell Crowe. <laughs> oh, you flip too hard, damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Shall we help him? And eventually, grape. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Should we help him <laughs> eventually? Seriously. Hey. That's it. That looks so much fun. Yeah, and no, I, I think that they, they've kind of um, <clears throat> taken what worked from the last film. Yes, exactly. So. I'm so glad that they brought Taika on because, yeah, that for those first two Thor films were just such a snooze fest and i'm so glad that they were actually able to turn that franchise around and make it something that's actually enjoyable i'm glad that he came back for a fourth film um chris chris hemworth because like obviously with um captain america you know robert Downey jr and um 
Chris, oh, I forget which Chris it is now. Evans. Um, Evan, that's Come it. Come on, yeah. man. Like, like, um, <laughs> like, like with them two sort of retiring, <clears throat> you know, their, their armor and shield, yeah. I did wonder if Chris Hemsworth was also going to retire. Um, apparently, this isn't a hand under the mantle, though, like as in he's not going to be stepping away after this either. So, yeah. Uh, I'm assuming that we'll see Chris I mean, Hemsworth I, I think again. like him having the supporting cast of the Guardians is probably helpful. Um, I still like they're my least favorite of all of these like MCU franchises, but I love w- with Thor in the mix, it it makes it a little bit more bearable to watch the Guardian films. Yeah, yeah. I love Cork though, like he's great. Oh so. yeah, it's Taika, he's hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like- <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was gonna say, when, to be honest, I think that looks good. I'm excited. I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, I was nervous because I mean, like, not nervous that they're gonna have like. A female Thor like I think that's badass but like I was nervous about Natalie Portman being that female Thor but like she actually looks the part like I like it she looks I liked good. it she looks um, good with Mjolnir she looks good in the costume I like it I'm digging it I do you know I know the original the prequel Star Wars got a lot of grief um but like uh I actually thought she was pretty good especially like in the action scenes I, there was, I can't remember which one it was episode two or three where she's tied up and then she gets out and she sort of joined in the fight. In, and yeah. I thought that Natalie no, Portman was Yeah. Good. I think, like, I mean, I, I love Natalie Portman. I think she's a fantastic actress. I just didn't know that. I didn't think she had the stature because I know she's very small. And I mm. was like, mm, like a, a five foot one Thor? Like, that's going to be very odd. But no. Yeah, maybe, maybe, it works. Maybe, maybe like, maybe some <laughs> heels and some yeah. muscle building went in. <laughs> but, um, anyway, so we're not going to do any more news because. Yeah. I didn't really see anything that was overly interesting. I can't to keep me. up anymore. Like, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. there's like, so much going on. Uh, oh no, actually, you text me actually a link. We didn't write this down, but you text me a link of um, Kirby returning for the new Scream film. Yeah, we well, had been talking about that. about that for so long. You've been talking like, about that for like ten years, and so I saw that little bit, and I was like, oh my god, uh, Mark is going to be so happy about this. That Kirby's uh, coming back. So pleased. They should make her the main character. Yeah, so, for those of you that, that are lost, like, Kirby is the character in the fourth Scream film. When yeah, yeah. They the best character to... in Scream 4. <laughs> yeah, right. that, that, that's true. Very and true. Then I was so disappointed they didn't bring her back for Scream 5, but now yeah. I'm I'm actually pleased that she's yeah. coming back for Scream she, 6. She gets so. stabbed, but like we don't actually see her die in the yeah. film. So mm. it was always kind of up in the air, like, is Kirby dead? Is she not dead? I have well, no for Scream idea. 5, they basically brought back everybody they could bring back. So I was like, yeah. oh, come on, you've got to bring back Kirby. And yeah. they didn't. Well. And I was like, oh, what Oh, loss. well, Scream yeah. 6 might be happening. Can't, can't come <laughs> soon enough. So um, anyway, we're, we're, no more news there. But I was just to say, like, obviously, in the last six, seven weeks since our last episode, obviously, we've both watched and read a lot. Um, yeah. I, I have to say, like, I went to the cinema a fair amount. I've seen the animated movie, The Bad Guys, which is okay. I'll be honest, yeah. I struggled to keep awake. Um, but the kid, the kids loved it. Um, saw Sonic the Hedgehog 2, which wasn't great. Um, <laughs> like, Were you expecting an Oscar-worthy film in Sonic 2? Uh, not really, like, an Oscar film, but I was hoping for a bit more. Do you know what, though? I prefer Sonic 2 to The Bad Guys, so... Well, I, it uh, just... How is he as Knuckles? Yeah, no, he was good. I liked Idris. Uh, yeah. Idris, I liked Knuckles. Like so, I, I thought he, he he did um he did well. I saw Doctor Strange. Uh, the the second one, obviously. Um, definitely how, how not. Was it? Definitely not for children under twelve. Um, yeah, I've heard a lot of people. I have not seen it yet. Um, yeah. when the podcast is on hiatus, I am on hiatus, so uh, I have not been to the movies in quite some time. But I've yeah. heard a lot of people say that you got to pay attention to that horror tag because it is. There are quite a few jump scares. In well, it's a 12, it's a twelve A here in the UK, so you can bring kids as long as isn't someone you know an adult over twelve, and um, sorry, an adult you can bring kids under twelve. And um, so I went with my eight year old, my wife, and my twelve um, year old. My twelve year old was fine, but my eight year old, I had <clears> in the end, she was sitting on my lap, and there were several moments I had to put my hands over her eyes. Yeah. So I would definitely say this not for children like at all oh uh, anyway Good below 12 anyway yeah, yeah there's quite a few horrible death scenes and um it's a shame you haven't seen it yet because i know i'm behind and behind I, I i don't want to ruin it then but there's a few cool cameos like when they do the whole multiverse thing and there's uh-huh. a few there's a there's a there's a couple of characters that we've never seen before um okay uh there's some i mean obviously if you saw the trailers you know that 
Patrick Stewart's voice is in there. So we yeah. know that we already knew Professor X was going to be in it, but uh, he's in the cool uh, yellow chair that they have in the animated TV series. So oh, fine. Uh, right. And um, I mean, as you know, he's in it. He comes when he comes in in the yellow seat, uh, yellow wheelchair. They played only a snippet of that music from the nineties animated show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a snip, <laughs> just a snippet. It just just minorly is in the background. So uh there's some other cool characters in there as well, but I won't ruin it. I I anyway, my my thoughts on Doll Strange 2 probably in the chunk of Marvel movies that I didn't love. So, yeah, okay. I've uh, heard a lot of that. Not that yeah. it was bad, but that it just was not good great yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> like, yeah i wouldn't say i hated it yeah just didn't like it that much didn't, so, it's, yeah. it's not typical mcu fan no. yeah so what did and you then, think about sam raimi like how did how do you think he fits in as a director um yeah i think he handled it well like i mean because it was quite a large cast and obviously mm-hmm. he comes in I, I seen a meme the other day about Marvel fans in 2051 trying to watch 180 mo- 180 Marvel movies and, and 18 TV shows to understand the latest movie. Yeah. Uh, so uh-huh. I was thinking, like, I don't know how many Marvel movies there's been now, but it's been running for like over 12 years, the MCU. And you've got to think as a director, especially with this movie, that he's got to follow on from other movies. Yeah. So I think he handled it well in terms of actually, he hasn't just got to follow Doctor Strange 1. He's got he's to follow got to everything follow, else. Yeah, because yeah. obviously Doctor Strange has appeared in like, was it, was it three other movies? He's appeared in both Avengers movies. Oh, no, he's, he appeared in Thor, although that was just a cameo. So, I mean, nothing really happened too much there. But then he was in the latest Spider-Man film, mm-hmm. which obviously had a big impact in. <clears throat> so Sam Raimi's got to juggle quite a lot of backstory to then create create his own world. So yeah. I thought he did well juggling that. And obviously... Um, you know, handling the sci-fi horror parts, I think he did well. Yeah. I just didn't you know, honestly think they should have put the rating up. Like that's probably what I'd say. Like, but I think oh. he did well handling handling um the franchise and the character with what's yeah. happened before. So, okay. All right. Yeah. I but, think at this point, since I am so behind, I will likely just wait for yeah this film to hit Disney Plus and catch it. Um well, anything you've been watching that you want to shout out? Um I've been reading a lot of web comics, but I finally watched moon night yeah. all of it um it was weird not not like in a bad way but it was like especially episode five it's like what's happening here like i i was just i was just sitting there watching it like what are we doing like i and i mean they this is not a spoiler but like they deal with mental like mental oh, health yeah, issues mental health, right yeah. throughout the entire series so it could just be one of those things where like they're doing it the way that they did it so that you as the audience are dropped in and you're just as confused as the main character because like there was very much a whole point where I was just like I don't understand what's happening I don't know why we're here I don't understand what this scenario is trying to show like it was just very 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 confusing um Oscar Isaac I love him I love him and everything Mm. uh he was great in this especially like the dual character role that he played but like also, I love that we had an Egyptian uh, superhero. Like, hell yeah, more African heroes. I love it. Um, mm. I, 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 I don't know. I, I didn't, I didn't love the series. Uh, I did love all of the Egyptian lore. Like, they talk about you know real Egyptian gods and and that kind of stuff. So that was really cool. Like, uh, I actually studied a bit of Egyptology and Egyptian history when I was in college. So that's like a hobby uh, of mine from way back in the day. So I enjoyed the history aspect of it um the special effects are really cool the way that the suit works that is super badass i love that um but yeah as far as like keeping up with what is happening in the series it is very non-linear and it is very much like we're just going to throw you in the middle of this situation and we're going to hope that you figure it out as the audience and it's just kind of like i I don't mind i don't mind that necessarily like you having to figure things out as you're going along because i think that's good to not always treat the audience as a dummy 
Um, I've only watched the first two episodes. I thought the first episode was really good of Moon Knight. I didn't really enjoy the second episode that much, but I do need to go back. I still, I mean, I still haven't finished Boba Fett, so I need to like, <laughs> need to go and do that as well. Like falling behind on a lot. It's, oh yeah. well, we got a lot. Like Stranger Things just dropped this weekend. Um, I know. There's Top Gun Maverick that finally hit theaters after mm. two years of delays because of COVID. Like there is a whole bunch going on right now. I know. I need to watch Stranger Things. So. Yeah, I haven't even I haven't even started it yet. That might be since I have the day off tomorrow. That might be my adventure for tomorrow. A part of me feels like because it's been so long. A part of me feels like going back and rewatching, but then I don't have time. Yeah. As it is. So. Well, they've got this season broken up really weird. It's like a volume one and a volume two, and then volume two is basically two episodes, but they're movie length episodes, like two but, and a half, uh, three hours long. Apparently, it's because they're not sure if there's going to be a season five or not this is what i heard the other day oh, so apparently there's uh, so apparently there's two endings that were filmed for this um for the for the season series finale of season four this is what i heard i've literally this could be no truth in this so <laughs> no, um but yeah apparently it's because they're just waiting to see if they're going to be picked up or something and then if they are then well you know well, netflix is going through hell right now so uh, I can yeah. see why they would be a bit skeptical. Netflix is firing people left and right. They are not hitting any of their projections. Their stock has plummeted. Netflix got some issues, man. Well, I guess the trouble is that for the first time in a long time, they've got competition now. So, well, I mean, they... COVID, like people are starting to go outside again. So, like, they're not willing to spend the money to sit on their couch and stay inside anymore. Well, yeah, there's that, but also there's Disney yeah. and there's HBO Max as well. Oh, so. Everybody has a streaming platform now. Oh, right? Everyone's like, got one now. 7 Eleven actually... probably has some streaming platform too. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Everybody and their mother has a streaming platform at oh. this point. It's going to be ridiculous, though, isn't it, in the end? Because you're going to be like, well, I'm not going to pay for, you know, I pay for Disney, I pay for Amazon, and I pay mm -hmm. for Netflix. That's all I pay for. But like, I'm not going to keep, you know, because in the UK, I think that might be it paid. I mean, you know, you can get into Sky and mm -hmm. Virgin, um, Broadband, uh, Virgin, or you can get to, um, uh, what else is there? Or, or you can pay for sports packages and stuff like yeah. that. But like, I don't pay for any of those. And then obviously there's like some free ones like the BBC yeah. um, and ITV and stuff like that. Um, but like over there, over in your country, obviously you've got loads of others like HBO and Paramount Plus and and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and I've heard rumors that HBO want to try and get out of America and go elsewhere. So I mean, they I'm should gonna... branch out. Yeah, but that's not good. Like for me, like I'd rather they just went onto other people's platforms over here. Ah, that I, would pay I for. see. Yeah. Like if they start, they just get content, syndicated content versus original content. Like if they start like pulling it from Amazon or Netflix, and then yeah. they become HBO Max in the UK, I'm like, I don't want to be paying for a fourth one. Like yeah. you know, so then you start needing to make some choices. <laughs> You're like, well, I'm not going to carry on paying for Netflix because there's nothing on Netflix. Like, mm -hmm. or I'll just pay for Netflix like once a month and just binge it and then cancel it again. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think I think people are gonna have to team up in the end and do some package deals because yeah, it's it's almost like they're gonna have to go full circle back to cable. Yeah, well, yeah, basically, because you're not gonna keep paying for these streaming things in the end. Like, yeah, so I mean, it's just yeah. it gets to be too much, right? It's just too much to keep up with. Like yeah, even with I... my anime stuff, like Funimation and Crunchyroll have merged, but like I had a subscription to both Funimation and Crunchyroll, and now it's mm. like, well, who am I paying? Like who? who which which one of these like somebody gonna give me my money back if i paid for a year up front like what the hell is happening here what happened with that then if they've merged then do you does it all, all onto one app now then or yeah so basically now funimation is releasing their new content like whatever they had started whatever series had started before the merger was official will finish on crunchyroll i mean on funimation but once that series is over all of that content will then be moved over to crunchyroll so now okay. all of the Funimation original content is going to be on Crunchyroll as well. Okay. Um, anyway, should we jump into our main feature? Or yeah, sure? let's hop in a time machine and go back 20 years, man. Okay, so I just want to shout this out. The title in America, <laughs> this is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Yep. And in the UK, um, I don't know where else in the world it was different, but in the UK it was Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. So, yeah. Um, yes. Mark corrected me when uh, when I was making my notes, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I forget that it's called the Philosopher's Stone because that's not what we call it here." 
no. Apparently, it's because I, well, again, I'm just could be making sure. Uh, apparently, it's because you guys would struggle with the word philosopher. So that's what I, I heard at the time. I probably so. we're dumb Americans, so like, wait, what do we know? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody said that. Like, so, like, um, you you said that, not me. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, shall I? Oh, oh, okay, I'll shout out this the top bit, and you can do the starring or doing. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so, directed by Chris Columbus, screenplay was by Stephen. I think it's Cloves, um, Cloves, actually, uh, based on obviously Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone by J.K. Rowling. So, and this film introduces some faces that we are going to be seeing for a very long time. We got Daniel Radcliffe as Harry Potter, Rupert Grinch as Ron Weasley, Emma Watson as Hermione Granger. All. First of all, before I go on, when I was reading these books, um, I pronounced Hermione's name as Hermione <laughs> <laughs> because I had never seen, like I had never heard Hermione before. Yeah. And so like the, when I first saw the film, I was like, oh, oh, that's her name? Like, oh, my bad. <laughs> I've been saying it wrong in my head all this time. Um, yeah. Richard Harris as Elvis Dumbledore, Maggie Smith as, excuse me, Dame Maggie Smith as Professor McGonagall, Robbie Coltrane as Hagrid, Fiona Shaw as Aunt Petunia, that awful, awful person. Harry Melling as Dudley, also awful person. Uh, Richard Griffiths as Uncle Vernon. He's terrible in this one. I love him in the History Boys. Tom Felton as Draco Malfoy. And of course, Alan Rickman as Snape. It's a shame, like, obviously, Alan Rickman is certainly no longer with us. And obviously, yeah. Richard Harris didn't actually get to see Dumbledore all the way through. Um, but, yeah, uh, unfortunately, but I, I, I'm pleased Alan Rickman got to see this role all the way through. I was actually thinking about that while I was watching this film. Imagine if they had to recast Alan Rickman at some point. Oh, man, you know, I, I read that uh, J.K. Rowling handpicked three characters for this film. She handpicked. Alan Rickman to play Snape. She handpicked uh, Maggie Smith to play McGonagall, and she handpicked Robbie Coltrane to play Hagrid. Yeah. So, Alan Rickman was at the top of her list from the very, very, very beginning. She wanted him so bad. She even gave him so much of Snape's backstory that you don't even get to see until the seventh film, because she oh, wanted wow. him to take on that role. Yeah, because it's quite. He actually has because he's quite a big actor, and it's quite a small role in this first film. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine as being a big actor that he is, he probably would be like, why do I want to do this film when I'm hardly in it? Yeah. Like, well, obviously his role. She has to give him develops. big picture. Yeah. Cause yeah. Uh, he's huge toward the end of the series. That's weird. Sure. I didn't, I didn't know that, but I actually wondered that as I was watching this. So. Yeah. Um, she, she wanted him so bad that she gave him a lot more background into his character so that he would see like this, this is something like there is meat to this character. This is something we're taking on. Yeah, yeah. So um, I don't obviously know this as well, but the budget was 125 million US dollars and it made how much, Jasmine? Oh, man. 1.02 billion with a B. Billion. Uh, I mean, I bet the studio was happy with that. Uh, yeah. Why do you think we also now have like Harry Potter parks and like theme parks and all this merchandise? Like they are still merchandising the crap out of this film. Warner Brothers made a killing on Harry Potter. Oh, honestly, when they saw that money come in, they must have been like, how did we not make this movie sooner? Like, well, why, so. that's why also we have like five Fantastic Beast films. Like, who yeah. needs five Fantastic Beast films? I mean, there's five in the works, but yeah, there's yeah. only been three released. Yeah, I've still not seen the third one, but we will. Yeah. We'll get there. The time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I always get you to summarize this film, but like I, I wrote down like two lines because it actually just made me laugh. Just now. Well, yeah. <laughs> The summary of this film, Harry Potter's parents die. Uh -huh. Harry Potter grows up in a horrible environment. Home. Very true. Mm -hmm. He discovers he's a wizard. Also true. And then he goes to a wizard school. That is pretty much the plot of this first film. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, Good job. Oh, be Good job beats, on that summary. Beats the bad guy yeah. and then goes and then goes back home. Yeah. Like, that, that is the film. Yeah. But like, I mean, obviously. Oh, okay, we're done. Fun. Thanks for watching, <laughs> guys. There's a bit more to it than that. But there's a bit more to it than that. But I, I, I literally was like, right. I, I wrote these. I wrote that as a bit of a joke, and I was yeah. like, but actually, that is like what happens. So yeah, pretty much. Um. Anyway, summarize our thoughts on the film. So, like, what's your what's your thoughts on this movie? Like, okay, so I'll be honest. Like, hmm. when I first when this movie first came out, I was full on in Lord of the Rings mode. Like. That's, that's all I was interested in at the time. That's all I cared about. That was what I was obsessed with. 
And so yeah. when Harry Potter came out, I was like, what a knockoff of all the shit that's going on in Lord of the Rings. Like, this is stupid. And so like, I was super skeptical about Harry Potter when it first came out. Um, and I remember watching this film and just thinking, I think this film is too young for me. Like this, these kids are really young. Like this stuff is really cheesy. This is, this is really not my kind of movie. Um, going back and watching it now, of course, it's, it's very nostalgic because obviously we've seen the whole, the whole seven books play out on screen at this point. Mm. Um, so watching it this time, it was very much like, oh my God, they're such babies. Like they're so young and before everything it's all messed up and like, they're still so innocent. They still have like that big bright gleam in their eyes and oh man. And then it just gets darker and darker and darker. That's <laughs> like, go <through> <laughs> oh, yeah. right. Um, so I think watching it again now, it's very much like, wow, this is, they were so young and like naive at the very beginning, but like they were very much those try hard kids. Um, and so you just, you just kind of really admire their gumption. And so that's, that's kind of how I felt watching this first film again, just like, these are some tenacious kids and especially like Neville, um, when he tries to stop them from you know, leaving the dorm and they end up doing the Petrificus Totalis on him. And it's just like, you know, the first time I saw this, it was like, oh, that was stupid. Like, why would you get in their way? But now it's like, you know what? Dumbledore was right. Like, it does take a lot of courage to, to step up to your friends and be like, yo, man, what you're doing is fucked up. Like, don't do this. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm telling you, this is a bad idea. You should do this. Um, so it's just, it's so much, I don't know, I guess just being older in general, like it's, it's so like heartwarming to watch this film, the, this first film this time around, because it's just like, oh my God, I know what's coming for you guys and it ain't pretty. Uh, so I'm glad yeah. I, I'm glad I rewatched this movie actually. Like, and I didn't just think, oh, do you know what? I can go in and review this. Like, yeah. Have it, have it. I can't remember the last time I watched it five years ago. Yeah. Um, and I was like, because I watched it with my wife and <clears throat> she was like, yeah, but we've already seen this film. I was like, yeah, but like a long time ago. <laughs> like, and yeah. um. And I actually, as re-watching it, I forgot about all the little bits. I've forgotten the name. Oh, what's he? Oh, damn it. The guy from Faulty Towers. Uh... I don't know what Faulty Towers is. Oh, the guy who plays Q in the update. He plays Q in the... Um... In the Bond films? Yeah, but he, yeah, he was the ghost that went through the table and took oh, his head off. Oh, yeah, um... nearly had the snake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, I forgot all about him. And um, and he takes his head off. Yeah. Um, and I was like, yeah, nearly headless Nick, yeah, obviously. Like, but when he when he took his head off, I was like, actually, that's quite disgusting. I forgot yeah. about all of that. Like, yeah. uh, that's not. I thought that's not for kids, really. Like, <laughs> most of this film could be for kids, but like that bit, I was like, that's not really for kids. But no, anyway, so this film, I literally just like you when you said that um, Lord of the Rings thing. So I had heard about Harry Potter, kind of. Yeah. Like, yeah, I had not really been too aware of it mm -hmm. but i remember the first two years the first two lord of the Ring, rings films came out the, the first two harry potters came out at christmas mm -hmm. so they were kind of linked and then it was only the third lord of the rings film that this uh, movie was skipped and i think it came out the following summer or something um so i was a bit like you i was like what a cash grab kind of mm -hmm. thing you know like two lots of magical fantasy things coming out at the same time so i went and saw i remember actually going into london to Leicester square to see the first lord of the rings um and then over here, like just keep hearing more and more hype about Harry Potter, it just really put me off. So I was like, I'm yeah. just not interested in watch, jumping on this hype train that all you lot just keep going on about. Yeah. <laughs> so I, 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 for years, just had no interest. Like, and, and I, I swear, like every single friend of mine was reading the books, watching yeah. the films, and I was like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not doing it. I thought I'm not doing it. I don't care. Like whatever. And then the Harry Potter films get uh, books get getting released, and everybody, like I even knew people that would take days off work just to read the books on release yep. date like that and I was like oh this is ridiculous and I remember um I think it was in 2008 when the last Harry Potter book came out I was at Reading Festival um like music festival over here and like people could text they had big screens near the <clears> stages <throat> people could text their messages to come up on the screens and like people were texting like Dumbledore dies Harry Potter lives like all this kind of stuff oh and, like, that sucks but like, like no but like people in the crowd cheered when it said like Harry lives and like everyone's like cheering like and um I actually thought that bit was quite nice like the crowd cheering and stuff like that but somewhere between the first film and the last film coming out 
I decided to start watching the films. Probably yeah. near, probably near the last film coming out. I can't remember. I never went to the cinema <laughs> to see any any of these films. Till, what? Um, no, and no, I never never did. So, oh my I, goodness! I, I, I just watched them all as they came out, like on TV and stuff. So, wow. I, never, I um. I could say I was really slow to get into Harry Potter. I kind of for a long time dragged my feet about watching them. Yeah. Uh, just because everybody was going on about them. I was like, no, I'm not jumping on this hype train. Oh man. I, I think I, I watched probably watched that last film even quite a few years after it came out. So oh, no. um, by by yeah. the uh third film, I yeah. was all in. So I mean we'll we'll get to it when we start talking about the other yeah, films, yeah. but the second yeah. film was really the one where I was just kind of like, no, this is definitely a knockoff of Lord of the Rings, giant spiders. Like we just had giant spiders where they were climbing up the freaking mountain to go to Mordor. Like the hell? Yeah, yeah. Like why are yeah, we yeah. why are we doing giant spiders? Is there a sale on giant spiders? Like I'm very confused about this. But um, but in terms of this film itself, sort of my summary on overall on whether I, I, I enjoy this film. Um, one of the things actually I was I've thought about this several times. Every time I watch it, actually, I think about this there's a lot of films that tend to be set over anything from a couple of hours to a couple of days mm-hmm. or sometimes no more than a couple of weeks. They could tend to, films seem to be like a snapshot of someone's life generally. Mm-hmm. No, I mean, I mean, for the most part, right? Like they don't tend to cover a lot of them don't tend to cover months, you know, or years of someone's life. Um, and that's kind of why I don't really necessarily I prefer TV series a lot of the time to films because I, 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 I like character development mm-hmm. and I, I like mystery and when it's sort of drawing things out of people. I, I do like franchises though, like movies, like because they tend because you get to revisit these characters over a period of their life, mm-hmm. like, like Harry Potter. So one of the things I, I do love about Harry Potter though is that it covers a school term. So you get mm. to see, so there'll be... Some t- somewhere in the film you'll have 10-15 t- minutes of Christmas and like you know mm-hmm. they'll all go home for the holidays and you know and it'll, it, you'll see like all seasons and and also like with, with him getting involved in Quidditch like it's you know sporting game they'll kind of it won't just be the film isn't just about Quidditch it'll be a part of the story yeah so they'll, there's so there's although there's the main plot you know Harry becoming a wizard and training which is uh, you know there's also the villain, obviously Voldemort, is, is is integral. There's obviously the the character development of Hermione and we, um, what's his name, uh, Ron Weasley, and like there's lots and lots of stories going on in this film. Mm-hmm. Um, and even like Neville, Neville, like you say, like minor characters like Neville just getting a bit of a shout out. Like, I love the fact that there's so many different stories, and it's set over potentially about eight months of their lives and 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 i like the fact there's slight formula about it you know set at the at the dudley's or um house then Mm -hmm. they go to diagon alley or they go somewhere else then they get on the train um there's a bit of a build-up before we get into the actual sort of the plot as it were so I, i i kind of i love the fact that it's not you know, set within a few days of each other. So I can't mm-hmm. I quite like that. Like I like those elements and and I like the fact that we <clears> even <throat> within the film get some character development. It is very superhero-esque that you know you get a nice ending with a bow on it. Like I know the films get darker and not everybody survives those films, but definitely those first few were very much nice kid-friendly movies like yeah. this one. So, oh yeah and then the whole thing changes come third film yeah yeah so do you anyway do you have a <clears throat> favorite character in this movie uh of course so well i have two my mm. first favorite character is hermione because mm. she is smart and people don't like her because she's smart and mm. i find that very relatable also my favorite character is neville neville longbottom uh, I did not expect his arc to play out the way that it did throughout these seven films. Um, so he was he was my one of my favorites from the very beginning, uh, and he probably remains one of my favorites all the way through to the end. But like in this film specifically, uh, Hermione and Neville are my two favorites. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you with Hermione. I think Hermione is a brilliant character that really evolves over the seven movies, and mm-hmm. I, I I feel like she's not a main character in this film. Like um, so which is disappointing. I think that Harry and Ron get 
more screen time than she does. But mm. I think the screen time <clears> that Hermione gets is actually very strong. And I like the fact that she's intelligent yes. um, at quite a young age. And actually, uh, uh, although Ron kind of takes the mick out of her a little bit for her intelligence and he's quite horrible to her. Yeah. Uh, I like the fact that they show her. Well, that's what happens when so. stupid people try to compete with smart people. So, you yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my other favorite character though is Hagrid. Like, I think Robin oh, yeah. Train is Hagrid's brilliant. so sweet. Yeah. He's almost like a surrogate dad, Harry. Like, oh yeah, you know? definitely. And I love the advice he gives him at the end when he goes back about um, facing, um, what's it, Dudley? And he's like, yeah, but Harry goes, but we're not allowed to do magic outside of the school. He's yeah. like, yeah, he, he don't know that. that. Like, yeah. He doesn't know that. <laughs> like, so I, I, I love that as well. I think Hagrid is a really great character. Like, and yeah. almost, I almost want to see more Hagrid. Like, so. Yeah. Um, do you have any? So there's a lot. What I also love about Harry Potter is not just the characters and the word and like I say about you know what I just said about the dipping in and out for our year I love the magical world like you know the, the organizations and, mm-hmm. the, and, the, and the gadgets and the gizmos and the, the magical artifacts that they have is, do you have any sort of favorite sort of uh, magical items so not really one specifically but in general I love love the moving posters and oh, the yeah, paintings yeah. and like yeah. how nothing is just what it seems like mm. i i love that and it evolves like throughout the films like it the those kinds of pieces get more and more interesting um but like i, I i've always i think that was probably one of the things that caught my eye the most about this first film was like every time they open a book or if they're reading a newspaper and like the images are moving i mm. just i love that so that's that that whole thing about the moving paintings, the moving images, like those are my pro- probably one of my favorite magical pieces in this entire yeah, series. I, I do, yeah, I do. I did think that actually, because you know when Ron um, and Harry are on the train, <clears> Harry <throat> goes, oh, I've got a Dumbledore card. Yeah. And then Ron, and Ron's like, oh, I've got seven of those. And then you yeah. see Dumbledore sort of flickering the thing and then he's yeah. gone. And then Ron go, and then he goes, oh, he's gone. And Ron goes, well, you can't expect him to hang around all day. <laughs> yeah. and, I, I, and I'm like, oh, so that was actually him. Yeah. like you know and i was thinking so my mind actually started going i wonder like how that works does this magical card company like say right okay you're gonna be in the card but like every time somebody opens a card we need to quickly you know you need to quickly show your face and mm-hmm. then uh, like and then you're done with it like you know i wonder i thought well my mind starts going about yeah, how what are the this, logistics behind yeah. this how does this work yeah. yeah how does this work yeah i want to know the logistics you know does he get paid a set fee or does he get paid every time someone opens a card like you yeah. know like, or maybe he does it free because you know he's a nice guy. Like, I don't know. Like, yeah. uh, I don't. You know, like, <laughs> I assume he gets paid. Like, so I said, yeah, I, I I love those like those little details that they go yeah. into. Like, you know that obviously J.K. Rowling really did overly think this world, which is great. But um, my favorite item, which I love, is the Sorting Hat. I oh yeah, that crotchety old hat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I like you know when he gets on Ron's hat, he's like oh weasley i know exactly what to do with you. yeah <laughs> like, like, like. and uh i i think the crotchy old hat is brilliant i think it's great that it's like a talking hat i just like again my mind starts going well what do they do with the sorting hat the rest of the year like yeah. you know it's obviously got a personality and some feelings like yeah. they don't just surely they don't just stick them in a box like you know <laughs> uh, like i just kind of my he probably starts, has his own quarters like he has his own room and he hangs out yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe all the other maybe all the other hats maybe there's hats with different things so i mean maybe who knows like it could be a hat room like, yeah so, ah like, hat room. yeah but but you yeah, know i love the sewing hat that's my favorite thing so. nice yeah um anyway i so normally talk, jump into the structure of the, the movie um what are your thoughts obviously on just the script and the writing and of this film um i think it very much suits the age of the characters Mm-hmm. it yeah. doesn't ever feel like they're talking above their level mm-hmm. um even for as smart as hermione is like you can still very much tell like she's she's a smart like i don't know 10 or 11 year old you know it's not like she's trying to be 16 17 mm-hmm. um so i think that <clears throat> i think they did a really good job of like remembering that they're writing this movie f- for child actors um because it, there are also like some parts that just seem really juvenile, but it's like, obviously, like that's that's exactly yeah. how kids would behave, you know? Yeah. Um, so I thought it was very like age appropriate. And I think sometimes you run into the problem with, especially with films that deal with heavy themes where you have 
kids that don't get to be kids because they're dealing with like adult problems. And yeah, that's going to come down the line. But like, by the time we get to that point, these kids have also matured. Um, so it still feels very much in line with, with their characters. So I thought that the writing was nice and like appropriate. I yeah, I, I, I think it was, I think in terms of the script, I, I think they juggled a lot. Like they mm -hmm. had to introduce Harry, well, they had to introduce all new characters, but obviously right. Harry in terms of, you know, dead parents, wizard world, you know, backstory, obviously a lot of it was centered around him. We didn't really get too much, but the Wheezy's got a mi minor part at the beginning, which obviously mm -hmm. even the Wheezy's are expanded down the road. Hermione's backstory is pretty much non-existent. Although I think actually Hermione's backstory is pretty much non-existent throughout the film. So I don't think Yeah, they I mean, they mentioned that her parents are dentists. Yeah, and I think one of them's human, one of them's a wizard. But they, I think Hermione gets the least backstory even throughout the seven films. But again, they, there's a lot they had to cover. Obviously, the wizarding world, you know, even Voldemort is touched on, but not given massive story. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot that they went through. And actually, I have to say, I like the fact that Voldemort's story wasn't overly fleshed out. Yeah. And I like the fact that almost this film was a bit of a one and done. And although Voldemort sort of ran off as a bit of a ghost at the end, um, you know, to fight another day, so to speak. It was done in a way in which you don't really care that he's run away. You felt satisfied that they tied it all up. Like, yeah. you know, because um, because obviously he was in the body of, um, oh, I forget their character's name. Uh, Professor Quirrell. Yeah, yeah. So like, so because he was gone, he was kind of representative of the villain of the film. <laughs> so I think I think they did a really good job of handling the structure and, and the introduction of all of these characters and this world. It's yeah. very difficult to do world building, I think, in a first movie. Um, I mean, if you look at Tom Cruise with that that mummy film, they were trying to do world building and <sighs> an introduction of characters all at the same time, and it was done so badly. Yeah, That was a really bad example of world building with characters. And this is a really good example, I think, of introduction to a new world for, like, you know, for, for people like myself or audience. I think they did a really good job. It was easy to understand what was going on. Um, so, and even on a rewatch, it's not painful. You're not rewatching it to try and understand it. You're rewatching it for enjoyment. Right. So, right. Um, yeah. So, I think, yeah, in terms of like, sort of, I guess we talk about the world building. I think they did a really good job, really world building. Like, oh, yeah. For Definitely. me, I, I just love all the little tiny scenes, like the tiny little moments, like Diagon Alley, the, the getting his wand, you know, all of the, mm -hmm. you know, the touching of it on his parents. The, you know, they they did really well setting the scene up for you to come back for a second film. And I love the structure that every, other than the last two, so the first six films are basically a school year, um, mm -hmm. and I love I love that structure about the films. So. Um, I love that in this world building, <clears throat> they they start the film with this baby, right? Mm. And they're like, oh my God, this, you know, it's basically like the Spider-Man moment, like with great power comes great responsibility. Like there's so much that these adults are putting into this baby. Mm. And one of my favorite things about the first film is how when Harry finally makes it to the magical world, everyone knows who he is and he has no idea what's going on. So yeah. it's like, this, this kid is a legend, has no idea why he's a legend. Um, but like, just to kind of watch him navigate, like, well, shit, I'm famous, but I don't know why I'm famous. Like I have, I feel like I didn't have any part in me becoming famous. Um, I thought that was a really interesting thread that they, they played with throughout this entire first film. Um, and the, like, of course they had like a lot of material with the book to work with. So not that it's cheating with the world building, but like being able to pick and choose which parts of the book to put into the film. I thought they did a really good job without overstuffing this first film. Definitely. So did you have a favorite scene at all? Um, I, I don't know. Um, I probably would say one of my favorites is near the beginning when Harry realizes he can talk to snakes and oh, yeah, he yeah. just kind of has that casual conversation with that giant snake uh at the at the zoo and it it was just so like are you kidding me like if I was at the zoo and I realized I could talk to snakes I would lose my mind and Harry was so calm and just like so like 
wow, I've never talked to a snake before. And I'm like, that would not have been my first thought. Like, and especially at like nine or 10, like that would not have been my first thought about, oh my God, I can talk to animals. Um, so I just kind of love that Harry is so nonchalant about so much of the stuff that is happening. Um, and that like of all the things, he probably gets the most excited about the freaking like candy. You know what I mean? Like the, oh, yeah, the yeah. scene on the train where he's just so excited about the trolley cart and the the chocolate frog and the, you know, every flavor, every flavor beans. Just seeing him be like the 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 aloof kid is probably yeah. some of my favorite stuff that happens in the first film. Uh, one of my favorites, well, one of the things I mean, there was loads <laughs> of favorites like you said, but one scene I really liked because it didn't go how you thought it was going to go was when they're all getting taught how to fly on the brooms and they're all told not to get on their brooms. Anyway, um, Malfoy obviously tricks Harry into getting his broom. Malfoy quickly gets on the ground and obviously Harry's up in the air, gets seen by McGonagall and initially McGonagall's McGonagall's face is hard to read anyway a lot of the time, what she's thinking. And when she storms out, she's like, Harry Potter, come with me. And you're like busted yeah. like and i forgot this scene i completely when i rewatched it to the, like i oh, sorry i watched it last night when i rewatched it and i was like oh busted and i was like i think i honestly could not remember what was going to happen oh, man, that's when we meet oliver wood yeah yeah when he walks him down the hallway walks in and says you know can you come come out so blah, blah blah i found and then she goes i found you a seeker uh-huh. i was like oh i was like he didn't get in trouble but yeah. actually she's lined him up for something bigger yeah so it's, it's almost like Dumbledore and McGonagall actually like the fact that he's a little bit rebellious like and he seems to be given like a free pass not all the time but occasionally to be rebellious I think when they see that they can something good can come out of it Mm -hmm. and actually like that scene there leads on to him becoming a seeker Mm -hmm. um, and obviously we get to see the magical game of Quidditch but actually later on that's used at the very end in the sort of the sort of the final you know the fight with the bad guy mm-hmm. um and i thought to myself actually this is clever writing as well where they've lined up the fact that he's actually good on the broomstick rather than just randomly at the end jumping mm-hmm. on the broomstick and then flying into the air like uh, we've made this joke before like world war uh, what's his name wonder woman 84 where suddenly wonder woman can make a plane invisible out like yeah you know, like yeah. so, so th- this is where I like this kind of clever setup that we've yes. got. The introduction of flying on the broom. He's quite good at it. He plays in Quidditch. We actually get to see that he's really good at it. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, in the final fight with the bad guy, he's on the broom, and it's not unexpected that he's good on the broom. Right. So I thought that was sort of from my favorite scene. You got to see mm-hmm. sort of two more scenes that actually like worked from that. So yeah. I thought, you know. It's, it's clever writing, basically. It's not lazy writing. So. Yeah, but I mean, but that's that's how you know that they did the world building right. Like they mm. knew this is this is going to be a series of books. We're following the books, so this is going to be several films. Yeah. They didn't need to overstuff this first film, and they didn't do that. Like they put no. in just enough, so that when you're watching the next films, you can revert back to, oh yeah, remember in the first film when da 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 happened. Mm. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Um, Okay, so watching this film versus rewatching it, is there anything that's changed for you? Yeah, I definitely watched it with a less snarky lens. I think the very first time I saw this film, it was grudgingly. Um, yeah, I was as well. Yeah, yeah, you know, like just I don't know, like like you were saying, like just you don't want to jump on that hype train. Um, so I watched it the first time grudgingly, and I really did think like this is too young for me. Like I don't really like this. Mm-hmm. Um, but this time it's. It's just the first two films hit different now that the whole series is done. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say, <clears throat> I can't remember the first time I watched this film, but it was a case of, in the end, I was like, fine, I'll watch the damn thing. Yeah, like, you know, yeah, like, exactly. every, every, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give it. Like, yeah. you know, it was like that. I just did not want to watch this film and I didn't want to be sucked in by this everybody and their mother has like getting into it, etc. And I was like, I'm not doing it. I think what annoyed me more was just all the people that I used to work with and my friends that would take days off work to read the books. And I was just yeah. like, what is wrong with you? Like, yeah, I what? remember that. Like the because the last couple of books came out when we were in college, and yeah. like I literally would have friends. Well, the book six came out when we were in college. Book seven came out. We had just graduated, and I had friends that were like, okay, I'm gonna pick up this book. 
and I'm going to, I'm going to take the next day off of work and I'm going to stay up all night and read this book. And I was like, you guys are nuts. Like, why would you do that? (laughs) And like they did, they, they stayed up all night reading the book. And then like two days later, they would be on email chains back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Oh my God, this happened. Oh my God, this happened. Oh my God. I can't believe this happened. And I'm just like, that's, that's extreme dedication. Like Uh, yeah, kudos to you guys. (laughs) I, I, I think like I'm glad that I did get into it though because I I really did enjoy it in the end like mm-hmm. and I would say although I don't remember every detail like when I went back to watch this film like over the last day or two although I couldn't remember every detail there was the familiarity um yeah. of the characters and the world um and I really did enjoy like jumping back in and I think it's actually quite nice to have something that you can kind of jump back into and it's not I'm trying to think you know there's certain films that you can almost remember like every single detail because yeah. they're not they're not as vast you know mm-hmm. they're not don't have as much in it um I like the fact that this film like I said like I said from the beginning you know it kind of covers like about eight months of time and, and there's also time there's also a lot of little scenes and a lot, little, lot of um smaller backstories and plot threads and yeah but they do so the details so well there's so much going on you can't remember all of it like you know you kind of even forget about little scenes like Neville sending up to them and stuff so what I love was it was actually really good to do this rewatch because I just didn't remember all of it like mm-hmm. and um so and actually to say to those fans that were obviously on the hype train at the beginning I I've you know I I shouldn't be as judgmental because I've equally done <laughs> stupid stupid stuff like watch watching the season finale of Lost at 2 a.m. in the UK when it got released in the in America and yeah when when the um the last season of 24 whatever what, I can't remember what it was called when Jack Bauer came back for his you know that came on at two in the morning I watched that Game of Thrones equally I've, I know, took a day uh, off when the Mass Effect Legendary Edition came out I definitely did I bought that so, video game after work one day took the next day off and played all day so look the thing is we're all geeks yes. you know we're all Harry Potter is a geek thing Mass Effect's a geek thing and we all unleash our geek in different ways so uh-huh. we do he- that he- way hence uh, hence the geeks unleash podcast like so <laughs> i would say what's changed for me is i'm less judgmental now than i was back then when i looked at those fat harry potter fans with you know heart look at them like snobbery but actually i appreciate i appreciate actually that they had their thing and yeah. we have our thing and i do love these harry potter films now but I yeah would I call myself a Potterhead no but am I a fan of this franchise yes yeah yeah uh okay so just a couple more things and then we'll wrap up but did you think the franchise would be as huge as it was no I mean mean it, it definitely had the the hype to be big but did I think it would be this big like did I think that there would be theme parks and all of that stuff absolutely not no have you been to any of the theme parks by the way no I haven't I've been to Universal Studios and been to the Harry Potter world. I would go there again. I and I did go on the train as well. Yeah, yeah. I want so to. I just I've yeah. never because I've never been to Florida, so I've not done Disney World or any of the stuff that's down there. You have to put that on your list of things to do. I know I need to. Um, I do I keep talking about this in my life about going to the Harry Potter Studios, which is in the UK. It's not too far from me, about an hour away. Mm-hmm. And every year we talk about it, but I only want to go at Christmas because they put a Christmas tree up, and oh. I mean, you know. I could go other times too, but I'd like to go yeah. for my first time. I'd like to go for Christmas. Yeah. So we are talk- we are talking about whether to buy tickets for like Christmas Eve. I probably shouldn't say that on the podcast. I don't want anyone else going like beat me to it. Uh, <laughs> like, so, like, like they tend to sell out. I, do you know what happens is every year I look around the last week in November, first week in December, and they're always gone. Well, so yeah, go you got to start oh. looking now, man. Come on. I know, and I, I've actually booked tickets um, for Boxing Day over here for Disney on Ice in London. Oh, fun. Uh, like, so I was like, oh, we should definitely get Harry Potter for Christmas Eve. Like, yeah. the kids would love it and then not tell them, like, get them in the car. <gasps> that could be their like... Christmas gift. Oh, my gosh. That'd be so... That Your kids don't listen to this podcast, right? No, no, no. Okay. No, no. <laughs> that would be so uh, cool. They wouldn't understand any of this. So Yeah, well, anyway. I have a friend who goes to, uh, like, they literally go to Disney in Orlando at yeah. least three times a year. And so whenever they go, she always takes a side trip and hits up Universal Studios to do the Harry Potter world. So like one time she came back and she brought us back like butterbeer and like a whole bunch of other like trinkety stuff. Like it just seems like it'd be so much fun. But like I said, I've just, I've never been. So I need to like hop on that train and be like, hey, so when are you going to Orlando next? Like, can I tag along? Can I come with you guys? You should go. I need to. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, okay. So have you ever read the Harry Potter books? I have gotten up through book five because I told myself I started the films first. I'm going to finish the films first. And then of course, like by the time the seventh film came out, like I just never went back and picked up the books. Uh, so, so I have, I have read never, up through five. I've never, read, I've never read a single book. Five is really hard to get through like book wise, because there's so, there's so much extra stuff. And I'm really glad they didn't put it in the film. Like there's this whole subplot about Hermione, like wanting to help like with goblins rights and like, uh, oh, it's just, yeah, it's, it's a lot. Um, I have all the books. I own them. I one day say, has to someone myself, in your house them. read them? <laughs> No, you no, 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 I, I bought them all because I thought <clears throat> I've got to read these books. Like I mm-hmm. actually went and bought them all before. And this is actually because everybody was like going about it. I did think, you know, I'll buy them, I'll buy them and I'll read them one day. Uh, I also thought it might be nice to read to my kids, but they were never that bothered. Um, so <laughs> they probably weren't upstairs. bothered because you weren't bothered, man. Probably, probably. Maybe I should, maybe, <laughs> maybe I should introduce reading hour or something. Like, yeah. uh, anyway, I, I have them. I just never read them. So maybe one day. So there's always yeah. maybe one day with a lot of things. So, yeah. so I mean, to be honest, I've got a fat pile of comics about this big I, on yeah. the floor next to me that I need to read. So there's I got a whole stack of manga staring me in the face that I haven't read either. There's always something to watch, something to read, something to play. Um, oh. I've got like three video games I want to work my way through as well. Yeah. So, oh, I finally fixed my Xbox. So uh, I've been playing Xbox for, for a couple of weeks now. Again. So <laughs> I haven't touched my PlayStation for about seven or eight weeks, but I was getting quite far into The Last of Us Part 2. So I do need to pick that up. Uh, the only thing is I can't watch it with anybody around because it's too horrible for the kids or my yeah. wife. So probably me and the dog could make our way through it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cooper will keep you company. Don't worry. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Before we rate this, I was thinking about the rating. Normally we do out of five, right? I just wanted, mm-hmm. wondered if you, because the thing is, like, five doesn't give you much scope. Like, so I, sorry, on air right now, out of 10, I was thinking, which do you, do you think, because only, only because I personally feel the films grow, like, and, um, yeah. So I was, I was just thinking maybe we should make it out of 10, because I'm fine with that. We can, we anyway. can switch it. This is, look, yeah. you guys get behind the scenes stuff. We do this on, Sorry. like, without editing it out. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would, anyway, I would rate this seven out of 10. Okay. At six. But not okay. like a bad six. Not like yeah, a yeah. bad six. Like, I would give this a six because I know that the rest of the series pretty much only goes up from here. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? Now you said that, I feel like I should lower my score, but I've said it seven, seven. So, all right, seven. Uh, yeah. Um, anyway, so for our next episode, we will count down to the epic 100 Geeks Unleashed episode. Uh, basically, we're going to review all the Harry Potters and the Fantastic Beast films. And mm-hmm. uh, it's actually quite nice to run through a franchise. So, yeah, it's uh, exciting to take a deeper, deeper dive. So, anyway, you can follow us on social media, we're everywhere Geeks Unleashed on Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, and Twitter. And you can get this podcast wherever you get your podcast. Google, Podbean, Apple, Spotify, we are everywhere. So please leave us a five-star review and tell your geeky friends. Thank you very much for listening. And we will see you definitely next week. Um, Episodes are coming out now every Wednesday rather than on Sundays. So um, we're joining in with a bunch of other people that we know on Wednesdays for Whiplash Wednesday, as they call it. So there's a lot of people that release their content on Wednesday. And we thought actually it works quite well for us. So we will see you on Wednesdays from now on. Yeah. Good journey. Good journey indeed. Have a good week.